This is an introduction to gas chromatography for the Organic Chemistry Laboratory. Before the advent of gas chromatography, organic chemists usually looked for ways to convert liquid materials into solids in order to analyze them. Gas chromatography changed that by providing a quick, easy way to qualitatively and quantitatively analyze volatile organic mixtures. To review, chromatography is a method of separation in which the components of a mixture are distributed between two phases, an immobile stationary phase and a moving or mobile phase. In all chromatographic methods, the mobile phase moves in a definite direction and passes over the stationary phase. The substances in the mixture are moved through the stationary phase to which they are attracted by intermolecular forces. The stronger the attraction, the slower a substance migrates through the stationary phase. A simple example of this technique is thin layer or TLC chromatography. This is a technique which is useful for routine analysis of most non-volatile solid or liquid organic compounds. In TLC, a small amount of a mixture is spotted onto a glass, plastic, or aluminum plate that has been coated with a very thin layer of the stationary phase material. Most commonly, this is silica gel. The plate is then placed in a developing chamber that has a small amount of solvent in the bottom. The chamber is sealed, and the solvent is allowed to rise up through the stationary phase by capillary action until it's near the top of the plate. The plate is removed from the chamber, the residual developing solvent is allowed to evaporate, and the spots are visualized. By correlation with standards, one can determine the identity of the components in the mixture. Importantly, TLC is only useful for the analysis of non-volatile organic compounds. Volatile organic compounds, like the solvents used to spot the plate and develop it, quickly evaporate off of the plate and can't be analyzed. Gas chromatography, or GC as it is commonly referred to, is useful not only for the qualitative but the quantitative analysis of volatile organic compounds. In gas chromatography, the stationary phase is a non-volatile waxy liquid coated on the walls of a long, thin capillary tube or coated on small particles in an inner, uh, of an inert solid in a packed column. The mobile phase, called the carrier gas, is an inert gas, usually helium. Unlike TLC, where the mobile phase actively competes with the stationary phase for the compounds being analyzed, in GC, the mobile phase doesn't interact with the compounds. It simply carries them down the column when they're in the vapor phase. Schematically, when a mixture is injected into, a, uh, into the heated injection port of a gas chromatograph, the components vaporize and they're carried by the carrier gas into the column. This is where separation occurs. The compounds in the mixture partition between the gas phase and the liquid phase in an equilibrium that depends on the temperature, the rate of gas flow, the solubility of the compounds in the liquid phase. The basic parts of a gas chromatograph are the column, either a capillary or a packed column, a heated injection port where a syringe is used to inject a sample through a sealed gasket into a stream of the carrier gas. It's heated to a sufficient temperature to immediately vaporize the sample. There is a source of the carrier gas and a flow regulator. At the outlet of the column is a detector that can sense a material and convert that to a signal for a computer to record. The column, the injector, and the detector are housed in temperature controlled chambers that can be set to temperatures suitable for the compounds being analyzed. And finally, modern instruments are connected to a computer that can not only record and process the data from the detector but can also control all of the instrument parameters such as the temperature of the column, the flow rate of the carrier gas, and so on. Let's take a closer look at a few of the components, starting with the columns. As mentioned earlier, there are two types, uh, capillary and packed. As the name implies, capillary columns are indeed very thin, with inside diameters of only 2 to 5 tenths of a millimeter, 
and they're generally quite long, anywhere from 10 to even 100 meters in length, uh, coiled up to be placed inside of the instrument. The stationary phase is coated on the walls of the small tubes with a small opening down the middle. These are commonly called WCOT, or wall-coated open tubular. Packed columns, in contrast, have larger inside diameters, usually in the 2 to 4 millimeter range, and are considerably shorter, just a few meters. They're called packed because they're filled with small particles and an inert packing material, usually diatomaceous earth, on which the liquid phase is coated. The packing is porous, and the carrier gas can move the mixture being analyzed through and around the particles as it travels through the column. The liquid stationary phases are non-volatile waxy materials that adhere to the walls of a capillary column or to the particles in a pack column. Depending upon their chemical structure, they can be nonpolar, medium polar, or polar materials. Silicones with general structures like this range from non to medium polarity. These are things such as methyl silicone, methyl phenyl silicone, and the like. Polyethylene glycol which is commonly known as carbowax, is a frequently used polar material, as is diethylene glycol succinate, uh, a polyester. The proper choice of a liquid stationary phase is often a trial and error process, but guidelines are provided by the column manufacturers with regard to the type of compounds that can be separated and the useful temperature range for each of the materials. The other end uh, of the instrument, or this, the detector. There are two types of detectors that are used to sense the compounds emerging from the column in a gas chromatograph. In a highly sensitive flame ionization detector, the vapor leaving the column is mixed with hydrogen and air and burned in a small flame. Above the flame is an electrometer with a high potential. When organic substances emerge from the column, they burn in the flame and produce ions, and these ions alter the current in the detector. In a thermal conductivity detector, the gas emerging from the column is passed over a hot wire that is connected to a conductivity meter. Helium, the carrier gas most often used in GC, has an extremely high thermal conductivity. On the other hand, organic compounds are less efficient heat conductors. With only carrier gas passing over the hot wire, a constant heat loss is maintained, and there's a constant electrical output. When an organic compound reaches the detector, the gas composition changes, and it causes the hot filament to heat up, and its electrical resistance to increase, and that's recorded as a signal. Finally, the response of the detector over time is recorded as a chromatogram. Uh, this is typically a plot of the intensity of the signal versus time. A uh, typical trace would look something like this, where a peak is produced as each component of the mixture uh, passes through the detector. There are two important pieces of information that are obtained from the chromatogram. First, the retention time. Under a definite set of conditions, a compound always travels through the column in a fixed amount of time. This is like the RF value in TLC. It's reproducible if the same set of instrument parameters is maintained from one analysis to another. Retention time is the time elapsed from the time of injection to the time at which the peak maximum occurs. Secondly, approximate quantitative data can be obtained from the peak areas. The computer can integrate the chromatogram, generate a peak table that includes retention times in the areas under the peaks. If we assume equal response by the detector to each compound, then the relative amounts of the compounds in a mixture are proportional to their peak areas. So this has been a brief introduction to gas chromatography in the organic chemistry lab.